All right, welcome to part B of 4.4. This is graphing sine and cosine. Basically, what we're going to be looking at is just examples. There might be some extra little things here and there, but for the most part, it will be just examples of graphing sine and cosine using all four values, A, B, C, and D. So we're going to be doing phase shifts and amplitudes and vertical shifts, all that sort of fun stuff. Now, there are two methods. One is kind of an intuitive method, and the other one is just straight algebra, okay? And I prefer the intuitive way over the algebraic way just because once you get used to it, it's actually faster than doing the algebraic version, okay? So the first way, the one that I stress, the one that I do, I'll show both, don't worry, or at least I've shown one already, um, is to use the pattern of halves, something I was mentioning in the last video. And we look at five points. If you recall from the last video, when I was graphing, I said, hey, here's the beginning, here's the end. This is just like for sine of x, right? I said, here's the beginning, here's the end, here's halfway, and here's the quarters. And then it turns out that everything follows those things. So negative one to positive one. This was pi. And you remember, these were the points that I used on my table from the previous video here. Okay. So I'm going to use this pattern of finding halves. So this is what I just, just talked about just a second ago. I said, okay, um, find your starting point. So you have to use your phase shift to figure out your starting point. Find your last point using the period, which you got to remember for sine and cosine, because that's all we're graphing right now is sine and cosine. Later, we'll get to the other four functions. We are graphing the period or using the period to find the last point. So notice here, I started at zero, went to two pi because my period was two pi. I found my middle by cutting in half. And then I know my quarters by cutting those in half as well. The other method is just the five point method. It's a calculation thing rather than just trying to do this halfway stuff. And then you just have to plot the points. Here's what you have to do. So you remember the BX plus C. So we had A times sine of BX plus C plus D. If you set this thing Thing inside the parentheses. If you set it equal to 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi, sorry, miss the and 2 pi, and solve for x, you can figure out the points that go on your table. Because you remember your original points were 0, pi halves, pi, all the way down, those five first five points that we did on the last video. If you can solve for x, then those are the x's that we put in here. Let me show you what you mean. What I mean here. If I had the sine of 2x plus pi, well, I would. I. This is why this method is a little bit. I don't like this as much because you actually have to do this. You have to say, okay, 2x plus pi equals zero. Well, if I subtract pi and divide by two, that means my first point is negative pi halves. And then I would plug in negative pi halves to here and figure out an answer to put in my blank spot there. Then I would do this. Okay, that's only one. I remember I have to do this five times. 2x plus pi equals pi halves. If I subtract pi, I get negative pi halves. Divide that by 2, I get negative pi fourths. And plug that negative pi fourths, I get an answer. And then I do it a third time. 2x plus pi equals pi. Subtract pi from both sides, I get 0. 0 divided by 2 is 0. Now, you notice this, this kind of can get tedious. However, you will always get the right answer. You get the same thing as if, if, if you were to use this pattern. Now, for the most part, what, I do in this, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to use the pattern here. And I'm going to kill that chicken if it doesn't shut up. But all right, so we're going to use the pattern for the most part in this video. 
Okay, so after you get your x values, you substitute them in and you solve for y and you get your coordinates and you can plot those five coordinates. Now it is five points. You recall from the sine function, I did one, two, three, four, and five, right? And that five point system figured out my entire graph, my entire period. All right, so let's just start this. You can go to Desmos if you so choose um, to graph these. And you can even graph them on your graphing calculator, but here's what you have to understand. We are doing everything in radians. Everything in radians. Let me, iterate, let me say that again. Radians. So if you go to graph these functions on your calculator, you need to be in radian mode to kind of follow along what uh, we're doing here for our graphs. So let's start with sine of 2x. Now you might remember I graphed this one in the other video really quickly. And here's some things I need to figure out. I need to figure out amplitude. Well, that's 2. I need to figure out period. Well, because b is 1, it's just 2 pi. And there is no phase shift and there is no vertical shift. So here's what I'm going to set up. I'm going to say, okay, well, my amplitude is 2, so I need to go up 2. I need to go down 2. I have no phase shift, and I have a period of 2 pi. Well, here's something I didn't really mention before. For sine and cosine, you need to remember the starting points. For sine, sine starts at 0, 0. And this is the parent function, I mean. All right? And then cosine, if you recall, this is the parent function. Cosine starts up at 0, 1. And it moves from there. All right? So this is what I mean by, about knowing your starting point. Okay, let's graph sine. Since we're not moving left or right, that means I have an initial point at the point 0, 0. And here's where I start just using my pattern. My period is 2 pi. So I have to go out to 2 pi. Then I'm just going to cut it in halves. There's pi. There's pi halves. And here is pi, uh, 3 pi halves. Forgot the 3 there. And since sine has a period of 2 pi, I'm going to start at 0 and I'm going to end at 2 pi. Notice I start and end at the exact same spot. And then for sine, here's where this pattern is something that you have to kind of make for yourself. I know in sine, it is going to basically look like this. It goes up, middle, back. So I know halfway through, it's going to go to the middle line again. And then in the first, first half, it goes up. And the second half, it goes down. And then you do your best to make a nice, smooth curve, which I am much better at this with a pencil than I am with this uh, pattern, or with a pen here. So there is the sine, or actually two sine of x. Okay, let's try our next one. Whoops, that was not supposed to happen. Come on here. All right. Half sine of half x. You might recall these are the same functions from the last graph or from the last video. That's ugly. I can't have it. I can't have that. Let's try this again. There's a line. There's a much more horizontal line. Okay. So again, let's figure out some things. Let's figure out amplitude. Amplitude is half. Period is 2 pi over a half, which is 4 pi. Okay, so again, there's no phase shift. There's no vertical shift, which means I'm just going to go straight here to 1 half. I'm going to go down here to negative one half. I'm going to say, okay, sine. I couldn't be doing this for cosine as well, but sine starts at zero, zero. 
and it goes an entire period away. Well, in this case, the period is 4 pi. If I cut that in half, I get 2 pi. If I cut that in half, I get pi. And if I cut the other piece in half, I get 3 pi. This is the beauty of these sine functions. There's 0, 0. I start and end at the same spot, one period away. I'm halfway between. I end at this, I'm at the same point. And then sine always goes up from the start and down that way. I go up. Ooh, ooh, this might be a good one. Oh, it's a good one. All right. Oh, it's not too bad. But what you want, might want to see here is actually what the original sine of x, the parent function, would look like here. Um, I didn't do a very good job of letting this be able to happen, but if I think about what's the parent function going to look like, it goes up here to 1 and down here to negative 1. And the actual parent function is going to be this. It's going to start here at 0, 0. It's going to end here at 2 pi, halfway. And then halfway is up and halfway again is down. So you notice what the original parent function is going to look like compared to this half sine. Let's see if I can do this one any good. Ooh, this is pretty ugly. Oh, this is pretty ugly. Okay, again, like I said, I'm much better at this uh, on paper than I am on this computer thing. Okay, this newfangled computer trickery, right? All right, so let's go this direction. Maybe this works a little better. Oh, that's horrible, but I think you get the idea. So notice the period is much larger in the green function, and the amplitude is much shorter in the green function as the parent function is. All right, so that's that function. Let's go ahead and try another one here. Let's make them a little bit more challenging. Let's put a phase shift and a vertical shift in there. Okay, so uh, let's go here. We go amplitude is 1. Uh, period is 2 pi nicely because a or uh, sorry b is 1. Now we have to deal with a phase shift which is pi over 1. So it's just pi to the right and up 2. So notice we have everything going on or almost everything. We just have two of things going on I guess. Now remember, we are dealing with cosine here. Pay attention to the function that we're dealing with too, by the way. Um, you don't want to accidentally graph a sine function when you should be graphing a cosine function or vice versa. Okay, so here's the hard stuff. I need to erase that line already because I've messed up already. I need to shift up two units. So I need to put my x-axis down a little bit farther so I can actually fit everything. All right, so let's say here is 2. My amplitude is 1, which means I need to go up 1 from 2, and I need to go down 1 from 2. And like I said before, I kind of like to put this little dashed line in here to show my new center. Now I can start uh, thinking even harder. I have to think about what are my x values here. Well, I moved pi units to the right. And let's say pi is right about here, which means 2 pi is here, which means 3 pi is here. Well, you might be wondering, well, mister, why did you go all the way to 3 pi? Well, I moved pi units to the right, and my period is 2 pi away. So I wanted to go from pi, and I want to go 2 pi away, which is 3 pi. And here's 2 pi. There's 3 pi halves, and... 5 pi halves. So notice I went from the beginning to the end, which is one period away. I cut it in half, and I cut in those in halves in half again. Some of you, this, this pattern thing will take you guys a long time. It just will. But I'm, I'm here for you guys wherever you need, okay? So um, now, some of you are probably going to get the urge to draw at the 2 here at pi, but the problem is we're dealing with a cosine function. So cosine doesn't start at the middle. Cosine starts up. And if you were to plug in pi here, 
you would get pi minus pi, which is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, plus 2 is 3. Now, we haven't graphed a cosine yet, but notice this. Cosine, again, it, it starts and ends at the same spot. Now, if you think about the function cosine, the parent function, halfway between was the minimum value. So halfway between here, I'm down at 1. And then at my halves is where I cross my middle line. Well, and guess what? That's all I needed. So I get... Oh, it bugs me how bad I can I can I draw these things on here, but those of you that know me, you know I like good good looking graphs. So there's our function. There's one full period of pi. You can always graph more periods if you want. You could uh, go on your calculator and graph more if you want to see what it would look like repeated over and over again. Um, I think I have one more here. Let's go ahead and erase this one. And I don't know why it keeps doing that to me. Wish it would stop. Here we go. 10 sine of 2x plus pi minus 3. Oh, this one's got everything in it. All right, so let's try this again. Let's go and let's just set up some axes. Uh, I don't even know where to set up my axes yet. So let's figure out some other stuff. So let's go, okay, my amplitude. My amplitude is 10. Aye. Okay, my vertical shift is three down. Well, that should help me out, help me figure out my y values. My y values, my basic, basically I'm thinking about my range here. My range goes from, okay, if I go three down and then 10 down from that, I have to go down to negative 13. And at three down, I have to go 10 up. So I have to go up to seven. So that tells me my range of my cosine function, or sine function actually is what we're dealing with. Um, then I can figure out my period. So I have 2 pi over 2, which is just pi. That's good. And then my phase shift. My sh phase shift is pi halves left. Okay. So let's see if we can graph this function. I need more negatives than I need positives. So I'm going to make a little bit more negatives than I have positives. And of course, I use black on black. That doesn't really work. Oh, come on here. Oops. OK. Oh, this thing will not do what I want it to do every time. OK, so I need to go up to 7. Now, this is not going to be drawn to scale just because it's not going to be. All right, so there's 7, there's negative 3, and there is negative 13. It almost looks to scale, but not really. So I don't know why I did those in red, but oh well. Here is my new middle line, which I am uh, not very happy with. Don't worry, I would be doing this in front of you too. If my lines didn't come out straight, I would do them again. Okay, um, so there's my middle line. That's where everything's based off of. Now, I have to go pi halves to the left. That's where I start. So there's negative pi halves. Well, the thing is, now I need to go pi units to the right. Well, let's change that because I just realized that's not really going to give me enough room. So let's change this to here's negative pi halves. So you notice it's kind of just like a play around with your funk with your um, axes until you get the right width. And one pi away, so here's half, here's half again, is going to be pi halves. Well, if I cut that in half, that's at the y-axis. And if I cut those halves again, I get those pi fourths. And that should be enough in order to graph this function. All right, so let's try and figure this out. This is a sine function, so we have to start in the middle. So we're going to start on our dashed line here, down 3, which means we're going to end in the middle. And our halfway is going to be in the middle. And then the half of the first half goes up. 
Now remember, if this was a negative 10, it would just go down first and then up, okay? I can't give all examples here. Now, this is not a very good scaled graph, but yours would be better on graph paper than mine are going to be by hand. All right, so there we go. Hey, guess that, that's the entire graph. Well, the entire, I always keep saying entire graph. It's not the entire graph because it continues forever. But it is the one full period of this function sine. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to set you guys loose, I believe. Oh, sorry, I have one example. I'm going to set you guys loose on the, on the graphing, but I do have one example where we go in the other direction. Forgot about this. Um, if I wanted to create an equation with given constraints. So my amplitude is 2, my period is pi, and goes through the point 1, 0. So we know A is 2. That's pretty straightforward. And technically, we know since the period is 2 pi over B, and the period here is pi, that means B had to be 2. I don't know if I wrote this down below, but this means B has to be 2. And like, like this says here, if we just started writing that, we'd say, okay, 2 sine of 2x. And some of you might be done and go, okay, yay, I figured it out. But it gives you another constraint. If you plug in the point 1, you don't get 0 because then you get... 2 times 1 is just 2, and sine of 2 is not 0. So we got to figure out how to uh, figure this out thing, this thing out, if I could talk straight. Since we need to go from the point 0, 0, because that's where the parent function starts, and we need to be shifted to the right one unit, which is this 1, 0, Instead of having the x here, we need this x to be shifted one unit to the right. So we put in a minus 1 here. And you get sine of, or 2 sine of 2x minus 2 being our function. So notice it's really a straightforward kind of logical thinking. Amplitude's 2, so a is 2. Period is pi, so b is 2. And then we think about shifting the initial point over to this new point. Okay, now, these are going to be challenging, these graphs. So just kind of stick with them. Keep trying them. I suggest trying them now so you can come to me on Monday morning going, hey, how did you graph this particular function? Okay, so the assignment sheet says this, and it also says the do to me piece, and make sure you do those four examples, and it says on those on the assignment sheet, Make sure you answer the questions and then graph those four functions. So that's really what I'm looking for is the graphing. You guys can get graphing paper from me on Monday morning. All right. So good luck. I will see you guys in the morning.